Jake, what do we know about vampires? They are hungry for blood and the tribe is strong in Magic the Gathering. We're going to talk about 14 important vampires to be looking at before Innistrad Crimson Vow comes out later this November. That's right. Some of these vampires are vampires that we think could be reprinted, and some of them are vampires that we think will not get a reprint unless it's in some special sort of variant. And the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to my bad impression of a vampire. We have got 14 important vampires to look at before we get into the vampires that we've listed here. Please consider hitting that like button if you like it and hit that dislike button if you don't. That's right. It's the best way to support the channel with just the click of a button. Head on over to Patreon. Get involved on a deeper level. It's all in, in the description of the video. Let's talk about some vampires. The first ones we're going to talk about today are the ones that we think could see a reprint in the November 19th set. Crimson Vow. Check those notes and let's throw it to the car. That's right. November 19th, baby. That is the uh, month that comes before December. So yeah. get hyped. Welcome back that. to Jake and Joel. Talk about the calendar. <laughs> Bloodline Keeper here is a two black, two other, three, three flying vamp. Taps, simply taps to put a two, two flyer right onto the battlefield. And you can pay one black to transform Bloodline Keeper. Only if you control five or more vampires total, it transfers into Lord of Lineage. 2-2 two, two Anthem for vampires that can also still continue to make token vampires, Jake. $16 yes. only ever printed in Innistrad. Yeah, I could see this card coming back. I really didn't like a lot of the transform stuff. That's just a personal preference for me as a player. Uh, I never really gravitated toward a lot of it, but it is undeniable that this card is very good. It is a staple in Vampire decks. You are looking at a scarcity play here, a card that could get a reprint. It would see a big adjustment in price. Um, you have to think that the people who like vampires, they're purists, right? They want all of the best ones. They want all of the good ones. And this is one of the good ones. Um, what you need to know about this set in this list is that we think that these could show up in the actual set in the main set of uh what is it called again crimson vow crimson vow yeah as we were going through this list we were looking for ones that we think wouldn't disrupt the lore too much or already fits into the lore of innistrad and we could see them reprinted into the base set maybe some sort of special card jake the second one is patron of the vein this is a zendikar vampire by art if i'm not mistaken but there's nothing on it besides the art that really makes it a Zendikar vampire. Yeah, sure. And also in a standard format, you know, a six cost vampire that ETBs to destroy target creature and opponent controls, it's not that big a deal. You know, whenever a creature and opponent controls dies, exile it and put a one one counter on each vampire you control, that's a, a very good ability. But again, on a six cost, uh, pretty reined in, pretty fair card. Showed up in a commander deck, but could show up in this set. And I don't think it would be that disruptive. I think it would just be a good way to get more versions of this copy out. It is a $9 card only in Commander 17. Yep. Another scarcity play there, as is this next one, Captivating Vampire. We had it in M2011. We had it in Commander 17. Now it is a $10 card with only two printings, one of which yep. was a pre-con print. Jake, other vampire creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And you can tap five untapped vampires, meaning Captivating Vampire can be included in that. And on the turn, it is played. I've heard a lot of people in comments of some of my shorts <laughs> talking about activated abilities like this on a creature that has got summoning sickness. You can use Captivating Vampire to do that as soon That's as right. this card comes out because it's a cost, not an ability of the vampire. But That's getting control of a creature, so good. yeah, it's, it's kick-ass. Yes, it's a very good card, uh, $10 card here, and you could just see that vampires, uh, I don't know if anybody watched the werewolf video, but if you did, we'll go ahead and put it in the, in the description here. Vampires have such a strong foundation 
for an EDH deck. And we are talking about these vampires from the, uh, the lens of EDH from the tribe in EDH. And yeah, it is a very strong card. The Anthem is very good and the ability is just absolutely nuts. Yep, another $10 one that would we would love to see. Jake Olivia used to be a $10 one, but it's fallen a little bit more into the seven to $8 range, but I think is still a very good vampire for the EDH deck. Yes, this card would be getting a nice throwback. This originally came out in, I believe it was Dark Ascension. But Innistrad. yeah, very strong. Original oh, Innistrad. Oh, it was originally in Innistrad. So yeah, one one black, one red, two other. It has a nice ability, deals one damage to another target creature. That creature becomes a vampire in addition to its other types. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Olivia. And then it also has a neat little gain control of target vampire for as long as you control Olivia. So yeah, very strong card, very good. Again, vampires, it makes sense. Mind control abilities because you're turning something, it's becoming a vampire, it's joining your team. Really, really fun tribe. For the fifth card that we wanted to look at as possibly being able to be reprinted into the set itself because it doesn't mess with the lore or the abilities of the set. Jake, we've got an uncommon. It is Blood Artist. It is one of the most famous uncommons in Commander. It has, it has four printings. It has a ton of printings. It's still a $6 uncommon. But Jake, how cool would this be if we could get like a showcase alternate foil blood artist? I think that would be really tight for this. Oh, we are going to talk more about that when we get into the cards that won't be reprinted, except maybe they could. No, blood artist is one of these cards that, again, you can pretty much reprint it anytime. Anybody who loves Aristocrats is going to love this card. It does everything that you want it to do. And then also in a Vampire Shell, it is just super strong. And you can see how strong it is because it is a 0-1 for 2. That's how big the ability is on this card. It's just, uh, it's one of these cards that if you have the right engine, you can stay afloat with this card and drain your opponent and keep yourself alive. It's very, very good. Yeah, it's absolutely right. It was in Jumpstart, Jake, so it's in the uh, Historic Brawl, the 100-card Historic Brawl, built oh, in nice. Aristocrats-based build of the Corvold for the 100-card uh, Historic version of it. Dropped it, Bastion of Remembrance, everything dying is triggering all wow, these Wow, now drains. you get to play Blood Artist in that deck? That's just oh, brutal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love this card. I would love to see a cool collector version of it. Jake, we've got one more of the six that we could see reprinted into the set, and that's New Blood. It's a four-cost sorcery. You have to tap an untapped vampire as an additional cost to cast it, but we've seen spells like that before when vampires were a large tribe in a set. And the text of this one is gain control of target creature, change the text of the creature type by changing it into vampire. We know that tribal is a big thing right now. What with party still being in standard, we've had a lot of the last couple of sets be very focused around the tribes of those sets. So, you know, changing the tribe into vampires somewhat relevant, but I think this is a sorcery that currently at $5 is at risk of being a scarcity play eventually because it's commander 2017. And so if they don't reprint this one, this is one you want for commander and it can easily jump up into the $8, $10 range definitely could go lower in price and it's definitely very specific and very niche and again only one printing that's where that five dollar price is coming from yeah absolutely you just don't want it to go the route of any of those you know like reserveless minotaur cards that are now exploding because we got a somewhat playable minotaur lord right. as the commander this is the kind of cards that blow up that's when how stuff this like game that happens, works right? people just exactly. go crazy sometimes so next up we've got eight more cards to talk about and these are going to be cards that we don't think in a traditional sense would be printed into the regular set however we do know something interesting about magic the gathering and variants and collector products and let's talk about Strixhaven and the mystical archive there is a chance that some of these pop up in some sort of random variant it's all speculation absolutely the first of these is old daddy markov we don't think it would be reprinted or we know it wouldn't traditionally be reprinted into the main set because it has a command zone ability on it Whenever you cast a vampire spell, if it's in the command zone or on the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one black vampire creature right. token. Uh, you know, for a $47 card, Jake, this would be highly desired if it was in some sort of vampire mystical archive or in collector boosters only or something. 
That's right. The commander deck that this came out of, Vampiric Bloodlust, which is a C17 deck, has just absolutely exploded in price. If you had kept one of those sealed, the original, it was like $40 out the gate, and now that is like a $350 pre-con sealed. Jeez. Um, Edgar Markov, not only being a $50 card at the helm of the deck, it's also a deck that's a home to just a slew of vampire staples, some of them we're talking about in this video. So it really is a perfect time if they were to do, we were talking about this at the beginning of the video, if they were to do some sort of uh, showcase uh, catacomb cards or like yeah. some sort of like breaking the coffin or something. You, you can pull card. a card from Markov's lineage, a new exactly. special collector variant we've got in <laughs> Blood of the Vampires Precisely. or whatever it's called. Crimson Maybe Bow. there's like a, a, a fun... Um, stamp of like a, a cup with blood in it tipped over in exactly. the text or something like that right who knows so even though we're saying that these cards will likely not see a reprint i mean joel has a perfect example this has a commander ability it's not going to show up in the regular set no but it could be the absolute holy grail of what you could find in one of these showcase variants if they decide to go that route yeah. this is also a prime target for like secret layer you could do like the Markov family and you're putting in Edgar Markov right. and maybe Soren and a couple other cards like Soren's Vengeance, some some fun cards like that. So it's not saying that these aren't going to be reprinted at all in the future. They very well could show up in the set, but most likely won't show up in the regular set. Yeah, this definitely won't. Right. This this list, the back half of our list here, these last eight cards all come at it from a completely different angle, but three angles at once, right? They are high on our list of high value vampires that definitely won't be reprinted into the set. So that means, you know, tr through traditional thinking that they're going to go up in price because demand for a vampire commander deck is going to happen. There's going to be a precon vampire deck with this set. The, it, there just True. has to be. So... But the other two angles that that comes from, like Jake said, secret layer possible printing, possible inclusion in collector products through the booster packs and that, that would be a good Set one. $47. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Edgar Markov, 47 bucks, commander only card. Jake, next up, we've got Twilight Prophet and it's got an Ixalan block ability stamped right onto the card. Right, which means it's probably not going to show up. That doesn't mean that Ascend can't thematically work here. Uh, wow, I I Ixalan, another set that's really just exploded after being out of print for a while. These cards are just very good, and I do know that this is uh, one of these cards that is just... Man, that whole block is very strong with the flip cards and everything, but Twilight Prophet, very strong vampire. This is one of those cards that if it goes online, I mean, it is card advantage, it is a drain, it is everything you need, it is a must answer. Yep, absolutely. $25 only in Ixalan. It's got that Ixalan ability. We're not going to see it in the set. Jake, Alinda's the same way. This is an Ixalan character. It's a $22 card. You you hit it on the head. These Ixalan cards, it's the Mythics. The Mythics have gotten more and more playable as Tribal has become more and more and more and more of a thing. And without a way to reprint these Ixalan ability creatures or Ixalan lore creatures, the Mythics just keep going up in price. And I can speak a little bit to why that mythic price is so high in it. It's because Ixalan followed um, uh, Battle for Zendikar, uh, the Kaladesh block, and Aether Revolt, and then also Hour of Devastation, Amonkhet, all sets which had these lottery cards that were in the boxes. So when Ixalan came out, you have a deviation from that. We're no longer putting lottery cards in the boxes, so players who had all that wallet fatigue they acquired the cards that they needed out of these sets, but otherwise, these sets were not mass open. There aren't tons of mythics out there because people weren't just tearing through these boxes trying to find lottery cards like in the sets that preceded it. So yeah, all of these cards could get a reprint and it would be a really good thing if they did. Again, I do think that a showcase slot, something kin to the Mystical Archive, would be a really good way for these to show up. Yeah, I would assume, too, that we're going to see a secret layer tying in around Halloween with the werewolves, with the vampires, something, right? Oh, dude. Like, Innistrad, it brought us Liliana. It brought us Snapcaster Mage, Geist of St. Traft, a ton of really strong cards. So, uh, Wizards of the Coast is going to know that there's going to be hype around Innistrad, and it's probably going to have some sort of big head-turner uh, showcase slot. I, I would 
I'd bet the channel on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Jake, you can see in the art, you've got the Hedrons in it, indicating that this vampire is from Zendikar. The art alone wouldn't be enough on a card for me to say, oh, this is not reprintable. We saw it earlier with the uh, Patron of the Vein. I think that that is possibly a reprint. But Nurkana is one of the tribes of vampires, lore-wise, on Zendikar, and so it's very unlikely that we get Nurkana Revenant as a card reprinted into the set. Past that, it is one of the best black creatures that I play in Commander. I love this card. I know that you love this card so much. <sighs> so much. Doubling my swamps, that is what my mono black Commander deck is all about. It's right. mythic, it's 16 bucks, it got reprinted last in Battle Bond, and you know it this is one that if you were to see it it would be like we said mystical archive vampires or secret lair but at 16 bucks this is the kind of vampire that could definitely will definitely go up in price at least in the short term if we do not see some sort of reprint of it yeah because keep in mind and i know that we mentioned it in the video earlier but expect an uptick from a lot of the cards just simply because of hype vampire hype people are going to go right. in they're going to buy staples they may have never built the edh deck but now they're thinking about building it one card that i think is going to gain some potency from this set is going to be the next card that we talk about and it's soren imperious bloodlord this was a card that came out and it was kind of an undervalued vampire uh, these these three cost planeswalkers or an undervalued planeswalker these three cost walkers historically do very well but this one it took a minute for it to find some legs that one ability that allows you to put a vampire from your hand onto the battlefield is a, a pretty big deal and if this set brings us some big powerful vampires something that we haven't seen before something that maybe comes out and is like a big beefy vampire that's going to shoot this card up in price even more because people are going to start to be like oh well what can we cheat on the field using soren it goes straight onto the battlefield you take this minus three and dump any like you said ridiculous etb creature vampire right onto the battlefield this is huge so our justification for probably not expecting this one reprinted because soren is a character from here there you know so lore wise it definitely fits it's just the fact that we don't really often get the same walker reprinted into the same into a different standard if that makes sense we don't get another reprint of a walker right into the standard format soren was in m20 you know we've had ugin before that was one of the ones that was reprinted from a previous standard into a new standard we also had the like the original walkers all the way back when they came out in oh, yeah. Morwen, those were reprinted in the core set. But that's pretty much it. Let me know down in the comments if I'm missing an example of it. But even to that point, I think it just illustrates the fact that it's very rare for us to get a planeswalker, a mythic planeswalker for sure, reprinted into another standard. So it is a $15 card right now. If this one doesn't get one of our, you know, ways of reprinting that we've gone over, Jake, I think you're absolutely right. That drop it onto the battlefield alone makes yep. this card go up in price. Yep, 100%. It comes on the battlefield for three. It doesn't even kill itself to use that ability. It has one loyalty left over, and then you can start using those nice upticks. Right. Uh, this is one of those cards, again, came out, didn't really... It, there was some speculation, but then it didn't really do much, but it gets better with age. Now, right. a $15 card... Let's go ahead and talk about Kalidas Trader Get. Yeah, a little $13 Zendikar Vampire. It's a Zendikar character. That's really it. You know, it's not going to pop up in an Innistrad set unless we got some weird planes walking happening with some portals and some... Maybe they bring Bolas back. I don't know. $13. Yeah, this, it's a great one, though. It is a great one. And this one did come out of Oath of the Gatewatch. So what you need to know about that is that this one did come out of a set that was mass opened which had tons and tons of expeditions and stuff and despite that it still has a high price and the reason is is because it's a nice four of uh in some modern decks or at least a two of it's sideboard tech in certain situations but then mm -hmm. it also has edh playability it's a very strong card and it is a card again that is a must answer uh when it is played it can just I mean, it has all of the words on it, right? It has lifelink, which is a real pain in the ass as well. 
so yeah this is one of those cards that could get a reprint i wouldn't be surprised if it does secret layer again something like the mystical archive in innistrad for vampires the most important part of this card in edh is if a non-token creature an opponent controls would die instead exile it right so that shuts off graveyard synergies so hard it's just like an off button for four mana plus you get a you know plus one plus one counter dropper a sacrifice outlet and a life linker to boot it's not bad yeah i think that this yeah, would this would be one that would uh definitely make it into the commander decks and see an uptick in price jake we've got krovax the cursed on here this is a reserve list card that's how we know it's not going to be reprinted into the set it's not a particularly great vampire as you can see it doesn't fly it doesn't trample you can pay a mana to make it fly but at the beginning of your upkeep it gives you the option of sacking a creature and if you do that's great krovax gets a counter and if you don't you have to take a counter off a of Krovax. He comes in with four, so it comes in as a four, four that you have to give flying every turn. Not very powerful, but it is a reserve list vampire. And we know that the reserve list acts funky when new cards are being printed or the promise of new vampires is on the horizon, right? Would you play this or would you care about it if it wasn't reserve list? Probably not, right? I would not. I. It's pretty rough not, around the edges. Yeah, vampires have been printed so many times in so many sets in so many powerful ways that this would be one of the first cuts for me, most likely, if I was building Yeah, like this. when we compare this to Kalidus, which was a vampire with the exact same casting cost, you can just see, you can really see yeah. how far vampires have come. Um, yeah. yeah, no, Krovex, again, it's on the list because of reserve list so yeah. if it's one of those cards where you're like oh i've been putting off getting one of those and you just cannot resist the fomo well go get it for eight bucks <laughs> yeah yeah totally the last one that we've got is blade of the blood chief we put this one on here it's had multiple printings you can see it was in commander 17 alongside the uh edgar markov vampire tribal deck but it's a blood chief I, that idea in the lore is very zendikar based um, not that there couldn't be a blood chief, I guess, on Innistrad if they, you know, started realigning how they or organize themselves. They're very hoity-toity on Innistrad. They're not really right. as That's animalistic tribal as they are on Zendikar. And so Blade of the Blood Chief, it's only a $4 artifact, but it says vampire on it. And it's really good in a vampire deck because it's cheap to cast, cheap to equip. And it makes your vampires grow. That is right. There's no other way to put it. It is very good in vampires. What do you think of the list? What did we miss? What is your favorite favorite vampire? One of them that I think could have been on the list was Vampire Nocturnus. That's a pretty iconic vampire. And then also Gatekeeper of Malakur could show up in that uncommon slot if they do decide to go with some sort of mystical archive kind of thing, which again... I really do think that they will. I think that they know that each set that comes out, they have to figure out how do we hype this in such a way? How do we get everybody as excited about this set as they were about each previous set? Yeah, let us know down below what you would name a mystical archive-ish inside, inside set that only had to do with cool vampire reprints. We want to know what you would call it. Other than that, I'm tapped out. See you later, warehouse. <laughs>